and thank you for joining me today. My name is Jen Cleveland, and I'm an advisory solution consultant here at ServiceNow, and I specialize in workplace service delivery. Now, if you've been to any of my calls before, you know I like to start with something fun. So today I'm gonna to start with two truths and a lie. So here they are. Number one, I was a go-kart racer for eight years. Number two, I taught driver's ed for one year. Or number three, I was an Uber driver for three months. Now, if you stick around to the end, I'll reveal which one of those is the lie. While we're on the theme of driving, we're gonna go full speed ahead into the topic today, which is how our workplace has shifted into a new gear. We went from a place of habit to a place of purpose. But what does that mean? It means we're going to the office when there is a purpose. And I love this. I've been a hybrid worker for six plus years now. And I like to say I started remote work before it was cool. Back then, the thought of remote work made my friends laugh. They'd say, aren't you watching Netflix all day? I couldn't get anything done if I wasn't in the office. Does this sound silly now? In fact, 83% of employees prefer working remote at least 25% of the time, and more than 54% of employees prefer hybrid work. So at least having the option to go to the office when there is a purpose, and that's the key here. Before the pandemic, guess what percentage of employees were going into working remotely exclusively? Just 8%. And that's a huge change in two years to where we're at now seeing 83%. So that leads us to the problem we're looking at today. How do we measure what your employees are using and how they're best using it in the workplace? And with workplace service delivery, we're able to gain more than just user sentiment. We gather real-time data to help you predict the workplace data so you can enable a flexible and dynamic workplace based on your employees' needs. This is including the planning of space, measuring usage, and connecting employees with workplace services. All right, so that brings me to our topics today. I have three things to show you. First, I'm gonna plan and prepare my floor plans to optimize my space based on real-time data. Then I'm gonna connect workplace services and points of interest on my map. And lastly, I'll raise a request for unique services such as equipment and preventative maintenance. So let's get into it. Now that we allow employees the choice if they wanna come into the office, we're noticing just a small number of employees are coming in regularly. And what we're seeing is that employers are struggling with getting workers back into the workplace. So how do we make it a place of purpose? Using Employee Center Pro. I'm going to go down to find my quick reserve widget. And I can see directly on the right is our vaccine drive. I could also display the lunch menu for the day or other office events going on. This allows us to be the employee's gateway to all things workplace, including the ability to generate excitement around actually wanting to come into the workplace in the first place and creating a reservation. I'm going to go down and find my quick reserve widget. I'll go ahead and select advanced reservations. And since I'm a facilities manager, I need real time data and I can't just rely on estimates. So for this, I want to start using workplace service delivery to optimize my campus. Looking at my map, I'm going to search for desk and browse by area. Here I select desk and then browsing by my area. This allows me to look for a specific neighborhood or group. I found my IT neighborhood, and I'll zoom in to see more details from my map. Here I can see only our IT team has their own neighborhood in this building, and only one person is assigned a seat, Adela. It looks like those other seats are reservable, but are they ever used? One thing I can do is validate from my workplace manager dashboard. So I'm gonna go here from my now portal. This dashboard gives me real-time updates for how my spaces are being used. And I can see Adela's space. She's using her desk on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But it looks like all of her other desks in the IT neighborhood are not being used. I can even drill down to see only my AMS campus. Here I'll select AMS and leave the rest. I can see today's available spaces, check-in status, and even who's not checked into their reservation. So now that I'm armed with this information, I can better plan and prepare my workplace to fit the needs of my employees. Now I'm gonna go back to my studio and I'll just do that by searching for studio at the top. After I find my studio, I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And here I'll select my AMS campus. This brings me to all of the buildings within my campus. I'm gonna to go to the top and go to manage workplace. 
and then go to Campus and Buildings. It looks like I already have a building A and a building B, but I want to create a new building so that I can release this space and move our teams to a new building that's more cost effective. Here I select my AMS campus. I'll drop down buildings. I'm going to add this new building E. And I'll have the building address be New York, New York, USA. I'm going to click Save. And here I select a building nearby where I'm only leasing one area. I'll save. And by moving Adela to this new building, I'll be able to open up new seats for reservations so her IT team can come in when needed, but won't need to have the entire area reserved just for IT in building A when they're not using it. I'm going to start uploading or creating my floor plan. After I've added my floor plan for floor three, I'm going to upload my CAD file. I'll save. And from here, the source is going to set up. Once the source is done setting up, I'm going to go ahead and configure this floor three. I'll start by editing my geo reference. Again, I just want to place it in the boundary of the area of the building we'll be using. So not the entire building, because we're going to use a cost efficient method. I'll adjust my region. And then I'll select Save. Now from here, I can select the layers from the CAD file that I want to be visible. First, I'll select the building outline import layer. Layer type is building, then the desk outline layer, layer type as furniture. And then I'll preview just to make sure these look like what I expect. Lastly, I'll select the room outlines and select room as layer type. Next, I'll add the text for the desk names, import places from text, desk outlines, use the text, and then select desk as my place type. I'll do the same for the room, use the room outline text, keep the title template as text, and then use the meeting room as my place type. After I'm done, I'll start the import. Once completed, I can go to Manage Workplace and select Overview at the top. I'll select my building E, Floor 3. And here I can see my brand new building, Floor 3, is completed. Our next step would be then to go ahead and move Adela to her new seat, which she'll get an automated notification for, and our facilities team will receive a ticket to move any personal belongings and clean those desks. This will help us in optimizing the space in our new building so that we don't have to have the other building entirely reserved for a team that's not sitting there every day. Now let's review what we just saw. First, we analyze the data from Workplace Manager dashboard. Then we use this real-time data to plan where the teams will sit for cost efficiency. Then we prepared our floor maps to look exactly like what the team will see when they come into the new building. And having the visibility to then make cost-effective decisions using space optimization is a huge benefit. I'll add a teaser that we do have some big, big things coming up for our next release, specifically around planning out these scenarios. So what's coming up next? Now I'm going to show you how I connect workplace services and points of interest on my map. For this, I'm going back to our studio. In here, I'll select our AMS campus. I'll select Manage Workplace and then drop down to Places. I'll select my new building E, floor three. And here I'll zoom in to go ahead and select the location I want to place my service. I'm going to select right here on the left hand side and create a new point. I'm going to name this new point fire extinguisher. I'll keep the title the same and then place type as fire extinguisher. Then I'll select save. Now I can see it on the map. 
And before I go to view as an employee, I want to add a point of interest to help employees coming to their new building. So I'm going to go to the very front of the lobby area and add a new point of interest called lobby reception. Here I'll name it lobby reception. Title is the same and then place type lobby reception and save. Then I see that as a point of interest as well. Now I can see both icons for lobby and fire extinguisher on my map. Now to view as a user, I'll go to my location directory from the employee center, also easily visible on mobile. Here in location directory, I see my lobby icon. I can get directions, I can raise an issue, and I'll scroll up to see my fire extinguisher as well. Here I select get directions, and now I can navigate directly to my fire extinguisher from wherever I am. All quick and easy to go ahead and connect those workplace services and points of interest on your map. So let's review what we just saw. I showed you how to add services and those points of interest on your map, allowing facilities to customize the floor plans for your employees' needs. Now employees will be able to quickly find the lobby area upon arrival and be able to route to the fire extinguisher in case of any emergency. All right, this is our last pro tip for today. Now I'm going to show you how I raise requests for unique services such as equipment and preventative maintenance. I'll stay right here within my employee center and location directory. Right here from my phone or web, I can select fire extinguisher and see two options that appear. We talked about getting directions. So now we'll talk about raising an issue. I'm going to raise an issue because I noticed the fire extinguisher glass is cracked. So I selected raise an issue. And here I'll have the catalog item pulled up. What can we help you with? I'll put fire extinguisher glass cracked. What type of issue is this? Something's broken. Is this related to a reservation? No. And here I can see it pulls up exactly where it is since I clicked it from the map. This allows me to submit the ticket quickly and have the remediation team find it without having to spend any additional time reaching out directly. I can explain the issue in more detail, such as glass cracked on face of right-hand corner. And at the very bottom, I can even add a photo directly from my phone if it's in front of me or a photo I've saved. Now I'll select submit and that tickets off to the proper assignment group responsible for this building and floor. And now that the facilities group will get that ticket in real time and be able to prioritize it based on the urgency. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to schedule a service rather than reporting an issue in real time. I'm gonna to go to workplace at the top and select maintenance. Now I'll find my plan maintenance task. And here I can fill out the details of the preventative maintenance I need to get done for the next months on my floor. Here's a big one. How about refill the coffee before Monday mornings? I'll name this coffee refill weekly. I'll select the schedule as eight to five weekdays, but you could customize this based on what you need. I'll add workplace services coffee one for our basic coffee needs. I could add a vendor here if needed, but this will just be assigned to our local internal facilities team. I can add my template as this has already been set up. This will save me time and not having to add details such as brand of coffee, how much to refill, because this is already in my template. Estimated time, I'll say one hour, and I can add a planned start time or it'll automatically be generated as now. Planned end time will be in October, so a couple months. And then I'll add a description of this maintenance. How about refill coffee with Folgers brand every Monday before 8 a.m. Central? And lastly, I can go ahead and find the space on my floor map. First, select my building. Building A, floor one, select my space. And it's going to give me the map so I can select exactly where this needs to be done. And it looks like my kitchen is right there. And I can even be more specific as at the commercial fridge. Next, I could add an attachment, such as a how-to document or photo. 
And then I'll go ahead and submit to our facilities team so they can start refilling the coffee every Monday morning for the next two months. I can also see all my other facilities maintenance tasks here. This is a huge time saver for facilities, both with submission and tracking. I also just got my email letting me know that this task has been requested. I can click the link to see the details of the task or even route to the location. All right, so here's where we wrap up for the day. I just showed you how to request support for unique services that you can create on your map, such as broken glass on the fire extinguisher. We also reviewed how to create a preventative maintenance task quickly and effectively for a coffee refill weekly. Now, I want to reveal which one of those two truths and a lie was the lie. So the lie was, I did not teach driver's ed for one year, which means I did race go-karts for eight years, as well as I was an Uber driver for three months. <laughs> now, if you have any questions on those or on workplace service delivery, please don't hesitate to post your questions on our WSD community page. We are here for you. Now, thank you so much for your time today. I'd love to hear any feedback, comments, or questions. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you so much. Bye.